Howdy YouTube, Darlington Farm here. Well, I'm having a nice New Year's, just kind of relaxing and uh, have a little bit of time before I have the next gig come up here. So I thought I would do a video series on sanitary pipe welding. Seems like you guys are, a bunch of you have been commenting, asking me to do a video on this. So I'll do a video series here because it seems like it's a bit much for one video. Um, I was looking around on YouTube uh, for ones that I could recommend this morning. I didn't really find any videos that I would actually recommend as far as how-tos goes. Welding Tips and Tricks has one that's not bad. Uh, Chucky has one that's just terrible. Uh, they're using muffler pipe in case uh, or in place of um, sanitary tubing. Techniques shown are not really what would get you called back in any of the places that I've worked. So anyway, I'm going to show you how I do things. Not the end all be all on the right way to do it. This is just how I do it and how I've been doing it. So anyway, first of all, yeah, cutting pipe. So you got a couple options here. Basically when you uh, cut sanitary tubing here, um, you need an absolutely perfect fit up. Uh, and basically you stick it together like that. You tack it, no filler, just fuse it around there and you have to go really slow. So you get, this is actually not my weld here, this is just some crap I dug out of the scrap bin at one of my jobs, but uh, you get the idea. You need a perfect purge on the inside so you get a nice smooth weld. And ideally, you see that little black speck there? You won't have any of those guys. Generally, you gotta polish those out if you can get to them. So anyway, yeah, here's, here's two sanitary tubing. 304 and 316 are generally the uh, tubings that I have run across anyway. Um, they'll have the heat treat numbers and lot numbers and all that and generally we'll have the um, data manufacturer on it right here. And this is the type fitting uh, that is most common. This is called a tricone fitting and I don't have the clamp that fits on there to show you but basically there is a gasket that fits in this little groove here. Two of these guys fit together like, like so. And there is a cone, or there is a V here, like that, and then there's a clamp that goes around here. And as they, the clamp gets tighter, it pushes these guys together more and more and seals. So that's probably the most common ferrule, or most common way this attaches. Um, that's just called a tricone ferrule, or just a ferrule. Uh, they come in long and short lengths here. This is a long one, short ones are, I forget if they're, you know, three or five eighths or something like that. These are, I remember, inch. Anyway, so yeah, that's generally what you're doing. You can also have some screw-on ones here. Um, these are just three inch screw-on nuts um, with a ferrule that fits in there, kind of like that. It looks a little different, but you get the idea. Um, anyway, so yeah, basically you gotta weld these guys on here and you gotta do it really precisely. Um, so you gotta have a perfect fit up and leads me to cutting, stain or cutting stainless steel pipe here. So basically, I have three options. These are really the only ones I have seen used in the field here. You've got your George Fisher saw, which if you're doing a lot of, like a big production, this is, is what I use here. So basically, you flick it on, and you've got a blade here that spins your pipe clamps back here, and you rotate this guy around. It is built on a cam so that as you pull it, pull the handle over the blade, cams up into the pipe, you rotate, and you're done. We'll show you that guy here in a minute in use. Uh, next, you've got your exact pipe saw here, which basically is a skill saw with a base that clamps on the pipe. Let's show you this here. This guy slides in here, clamps down, and you rotate it around the pipe. This guy is very expensive to use. The blades for this are $90 a piece and they're carbide tooth and you'll get about four to five cuts out of them. So generally I do not use this unless I have to or if I'm just making one cut someplace. Um, and then I'll always, always build a customer for it. These blades for this guy are about 30 bucks a piece and they last a very long time. Um, Especially on sanitary tubing, they last forever. Uh, and then we've got our saw blocks here. So these are from Tech South. I think there's a couple other companies that make them. I think I have shown these 
in another video before. Basically these clamp on your pipe. They've got a wing nut there that holds it down. And then you've got a slot on it, a thick slot for a Sawzall, and you've got a thin slot for a porta band Now these are great if you're splicing into a pipe on a wall. You can just clamp it up there. You can take your Sawzall into it and it will cut, take about one Sawzall blade per cut, which kind of sucks and gets expensive, but basically grab this blade here. You just, oh, whoops, helps me go on the right one. Uh, yeah, Sawzall into it. Thusly, there's a hardened roll pin at the bottom here. It hits and keeps from cutting into it. Um, these, like I said, slow. Uh, you'll use about one Sawzall blade per cut, so they're kind of expensive. And you have to use the thin kerf industrial Sawzall blades. Uh, but like I said, if you're splicing into something or in a small tight area, you pretty much have to use those. Um, so yeah, those are pretty much your only options here. Uh, hand, hand cutting them, not really so much an option. I think I have done that once and that was just because it was a very small area um, that I could really only get a Sawzall in and I had to um, saws all it and then just very gingerly clean it up with a flap disc and a grinder. Um, don't really, don't ever use hard uh, grinding discs in this. Pretty much always just use uh, an 80 grit or 120 grit flap wheel. And then for polishing up the pipe after you've welded it, I always use uh, these Scotch Brite uh, pads here in a variable speed grinder and just kind of buff it up and after you've welded it. I guess I can show you one here that I've... Oh, show you one here that I just did what I was practicing on. Again, not my best, not my worst. This would totally pass. Um, but this was after having not done one in a couple weeks. Um, inside here. Came out perfect. Outside is not super pretty, but the inside is what counts. Anyway, all right, so I'm going to put the camera on the tripod here, and I probably won't use this guy just because the blades are so expensive, but we'll cut some pipe with a GF saw and with a saw block. All right, so we're going to go through using the GF saw here. This is uh, made by George Fisher. Now they're uh, made by a company called Orbitalum or Orbitalum. Uh, same saw, same exact thing. They just, you know, have a different stamp that goes on here. Uh, this is an older one that has uh, the all cast iron. The newer ones have some aluminum on here, uh, but they're a lot more expensive. So I got one of these guys. Okay, so basically your pipe goes in here. You crank the handle over here. The jaws clamp down on it. And like I said, as you pull up on the handle here, there's a cam in the back here that raises the cutter head up into the pipe. Now, we'll go ahead and adjust our, oh, adjust this guy here, I'd say somewhere in there. Right there. And you want this to be good and snug. Click it on. Starts up our blade here. Then you pull up on the handle here. You want to keep an even pressure. Just kind of let the saw do its thing, but you don't want to go too slow, otherwise it'll heat the pipe up. Whoops, and I didn't have it. You adjust the height of this guy with this handle here, and I didn't have it up far enough. All right, we'll do this again here. We have just a little bit on this side where it didn't cut. There we go. Now, as you can see, if you're doing a lot of these, this is the saw to use. It's very fast, very precise. I, if I remember correctly, the specs on this are three to five thousandths uh, as far as wobble goes. And it does a very nice job that requires very little cleanup. Basically, you can just hit this with a file and it's ready to weld, which is nice. You can see this other weld in here. All right, so let's move on to the next one. All right, so I've just got a piece of pipe uh, chucked up in my chain vise here, just resting on the table here. So I'm gonna go ahead and show you using a quarter band. 
because this will probably dance all over the table if I show you with a saws all same same basic principle uh, I will say one thing is if you're doing this for real you do not want carbon steel on the pipe here so this would definitely be a no-no um, generally I cover these with duct tape and we'll cover the part of the chain on the pipe with duct tape to where it doesn't actually contact the pipe uh, just you know kind of FYI there but uh, yeah so you just pop this guy on here and if you're lining up marks you just look straight down through the slot there see if I can get the damn camera to focus right there yeah you just look straight down through there at your mark and uh, that's how you line that up and then whip this guy over here and you don't have to get these super tight but you do want them to where they're not going to walk all over the place and then I'll put the camera down here and just show you buzzing this guy out with a salt with a uh, porta band here all right we're gonna see how well this goes here i've got a really dull blade in my porta band and i don't want to have to go out to my job box to get a fresh one so we'll see if we can just get it done with this guy I think I made it all the way through there. You'll feel kind of a ow. You'll feel kind of a drop there at the end, right there. Okay, so you can kind of see the difference here. Like this is a much rougher cut than the GF saw there. There's a lot more cleanup. That's why if I, I'm doing a lot of uh, work, I'll take the GF saw along there. Here's the other side. You basically have to do next to nothing on the GF saw side. Uh, they both will put a pretty decent straight cut out there. The only thing again, like the GF saw is you know a few thousands versus you know with this. You've got a little bit of wiggle there, but if you're, uh, well, there are definitely some places you can't get, uh, you can't get the GF saw and, uh, some places where it's just not practical if you're doing say, oh, say one cut, it's just not practical to take the big saw along there for, you know, a couple cuts. Anyway, um, yeah, at some point when I actually have some work here, I'll show you how to use the exact pipe saw there. Like I said, the blades are really expensive for that, and I generally don't use it unless I can actually bill for a blade. So anyway, uh, I hope you enjoyed. Uh, if you guys like this, I'll go ahead and do some more of these. Um, figure the next one will probably be fit up and welding, and then uh, maybe cleaning, I don't know. But it just seemed like there's so much here, I kind of wanted to split it out into some different videos. Uh, but yeah, basically that's cutting sanitary pipe. Part two here is going to be cleaning up and welding pipe. So anyway, I'm Darlington Farm. If you like this, please give it a thumbs up. Comment down there so pe more people see it in the YouTube rankings. And don't forget to click that subscribe button. Thank you for watching. All right, so I got this guy snugged up here. You just come along here. Uh, well, shit. I have a shitty blade in there. Never mind. Um, uh, yeah, fuck.